The Unconsoled has left many readers and critics scratching their heads as if reading a foreign language, yet it is hailed as one of Kazuo Ishiguro's best novels. What if I told you a tool existed that would help it all make sense? After all, seeking an explanation is not unreasonable, and that's exactly what we'll explore today. The Unconsoled is a novel that defies the usual rules of reality. We encounter a world that's both familiar and bizarrely uncharted. Ishiguro is a master of subtle and impactful storytelling, and he takes us on a ride that is as puzzling as it is engrossing. The book immerses you in an experience where every turn is unexpected and every scene feels like a piece of a larger, unseen world. Now, think about the last time you had a dream that felt real yet hard to explain. That's the essence of The Unconsoled. It's like walking through a dream where each step leads you to more questions than answers. And many readers see the entire plot arc as one big, anxiety-filled dream. Now, while it may not be that simple, our psychological approaches to understanding dreams may help readers understand what's happening in the novel. Before discussing this decoder ring to understanding the unconsoled, let's spotlight Kazuo Ishiguro, the mind behind the unconsoled. He was born in Nagasaki, Japan in 1954 and moved to the United Kingdom at age five. At home, his parents spoke Japanese and lived by Japanese values, yet Ishiguro spoke English at school and learned English values outside his home. And this blend of cultures has given him a distinctive voice in literature that speaks with subtlety and insight about the human condition. And his works often explore themes like memory, time, and self-delusion, which are evident in the unconsoled. In this novel, Ishiguro takes us into the life of Ryder, a renowned pianist. The story begins as Ryder arrives in an unnamed European town, expecting to deliver a performance in three days. But what unfolds is far from straightforward. Instead, Ishiguro immerses us in a world where the lines between reality and imagination blur and characters and events intertwine unexpectedly. It's like Ryder walks through a maze of human emotions and experiences. He meets an entire cast of characters, each more intriguing and mysterious than the last. From a hotel manager obsessed with perfection to a struggling artist haunted by his past, these figures add depth to the story. As Ryder interacts with them, he finds himself in situations that defy explanation. Forgotten appointments, mysterious assignments, and conversations that spiral into the surreal. What's fascinating about The Unconsoled is how it challenges our perceptions of time and memory. Ishiguro crafts scenes that feel familiar yet strange, making us question what's real and imagined. And this ambiguity is a hallmark of his writing style, and it draws us deeper into the story, urging us to piece together the puzzle that Ryder finds himself in. It's engrossing yet disoriented, and that's why a lot of readers get lost. As readers, we're compelled to navigate this dreamlike landscape alongside Ryder, sharing his confusion and quest for understanding. Reading this novel becomes an experience, a reflection of the complexities of the human psyche. It transcends the boundaries of conventional storytelling, requiring an unconventional lens to find understanding. So, what is this lens, or tool, to bring everything into focus? To unlock the secrets of the unconsoled, we turn to Fritz Perls, a psychological pioneer. Perls, generally known as the father of Gestalt therapy, introduced a revolutionary way of looking at dreams, very different from precursors like Freud and Jung. He suggested that every element in a dream, a person, an object, or a scenario, represents the dreamer's self. And this perspective offers a toolkit for interpreting the unconsoled. Before we get into how to apply this toolkit and look at examples, let's take a moment to understand the essence of Pearl's theory. I promise it'll be worth it. In Gestalt therapy, dreams are not just random sequences of events. They are meaningful expressions of our subconscious mind. Every character or item in a dream is not just an independent entity, but a reflection of a part of us. For instance, if you dream of a raging river, it's not just water. It could symbolize an unacknowledged emotion or challenge you're facing in your waking life. Now, applying this to the unconsoled, 
we see the novel differently. The mysterious town, the perplexing encounters, and the odd tasks that Ryder faces are not just parts of a surreal or Kafkaesque storyline. Instead, they could symbolize Ryder's inner thoughts, fears, and desires. And this approach allows us to unravel the story by viewing each aspect as a metaphorical expression of Ryder's psyche. Ishiguro has even hinted about this. Yes, it is, you know, it is intended to have a metaphorical dimension. <laughs> uh, Dialogue with these dream elements is another key component of Pearl's method. In therapy, a person might be encouraged to talk to different parts of their dream. This conversation can reveal conflicts, hidden emotions, and deeper insights into oneself. Imagine Ryder, the protagonist, engaging in a dialogue with the odd characters he meets or the strange situations he finds himself in. What might these interactions reveal about his inner world? The beauty of using Pearl's dream analysis and understanding the unconsoled lies in its ability to transform the narrative from a sequence of bizarre events into a meaningful exploration of the protagonist's mind. Rather than being stumbling blocks, the novel's ambiguity and complexity become gateways to a deeper understanding. And through this lens, The Unconsoled is a story about a pianist's inexplicable experiences in a European town and a rich symbolic journey through a person's mind. It already sounds easier, right? Let's start with the recurring motif of the unplayed piano, a prominent symbol throughout the book. This piano, which Ryder repeatedly encounters but never plays, could be more than just a musical instrument in the story. It might represent his unfulfilled ambitions or possibly his suppressed creativity. In one instance, Ryder finds himself in a room with a piano, yet he's unable to play it, despite the expectations of those around him. I could see the piano under the window. It occurred to me I might demonstrate a little of my repertoire, but somehow I felt reluctant to draw attention to myself. This scene could mirror an internal struggle, a fear of not meeting expectations, or a sense of lost opportunity. Then there are the disjointed conversations that Ryder has with the townspeople. These interactions, often confusing and lacking clear resolution, could symbolize his internal conflicts or a fragmented sense of self. For example, Ryder's conversation with the hotel manager about mundane matters swiftly turns into a deep, emotionally charged discussion about the manager's life. And this sudden shift could reflect Ryder's internal shift from superficial interactions to confronting deeper emotional issues. Another interesting aspect is Ryder's relationship with the characters he meets. Each could represent a different aspect of his personality. Of the porter, Ishiguro writes, I felt a strange reluctance to part with him. There was something about his manner that suggested a long and complex association with me. This porter who carries Ryder's luggage and seemingly knows all about the town might represent Ryder's past or his burdens. After all, Ryder recognizes a deep connection with this man. With her mysterious connection to Ryder, the character of Sophie could represent a part of his life that he is trying to understand or come to terms with. The novel's setting, this unnamed European town that Ryder navigates with difficulty, is also ripe for interpretation. The town's labyrinth-like structure, where Ryder often finds himself lost or going in circles, could be a metaphor for his mental state, confused, searching, and trying to find direction. When Ryder attempts to reach a destination, he often ends up somewhere unexpected, reflecting the unpredictability of life and the challenges of understanding one's journey. Ryder's forgotten commitments and missed appointments throughout the novel add another layer. He says, I had the sense of an important task left undone. These forgotten bits of his schedule might represent missed opportunities or regrets in his life. The anxiety and confusion he feels about these commitments reflect a deeper sense of disarray. Furthermore, the elusive nature of time in the novel, where past, present, and future seem to blend, can be seen as a representation of Ryder's perception of his own life. His struggle to distinguish between these time frames could parallel his struggle to understand the continuum of his experiences and memories. Viewing the unconsoled through the lens of Fritz Perl's dream analysis truly opens a new avenue of understanding. What once seemed like a bewildering maze of events and characters now resembles a detailed map of the protagonist's inner world. So, it really is like a magic toolkit to understand Ishiguro's novel. You see, Gestalt therapy focuses on understanding the self, and this holistic view lends itself in deciphering the unconsoled. The novel's dreamlike sequences, peculiar characters, and ever-shifting settings no longer appear as just parts of a convoluted narrative. 
Instead, they become symbolic representations of writers' thoughts, fears, and desires. Each element becomes a clue to understanding his psyche. As we've seen, the recurring motif of the unplayed piano, which initially might seem like a mere element of the setting, gains profound significance. It becomes a symbol of writers' unexpressed emotions or perhaps his unfulfilled potential. Similarly, the confusing characters writer encounters aren't just individuals he meets. We see them as reflections or fragments of writer's own personality, each embodying different aspects of his identity and experiences. The beauty of this approach lies in its ability to transform the seemingly disjointed and inexplicable elements of the novel into meaningful insights about human psychology. By viewing the unconsoled through the lens of Pearl's dreams analysis, we gain insight into the human mind. We start to see patterns and connections where there once seemed to be none, and the novel becomes more accessible. This analysis method also opens up a broader discussion about the power of literature, the mirror, the human psyche. It challenges us to look beyond the surface of the text into the often unspoken areas of the protagonist's mind. So, applying Pearl's dream analysis to the unconsoled enhances our understanding of this novel and demonstrates the value of psychological perspectives in literary interpretation. It encourages readers to engage with literature more actively and introspectively, turning the reading experience into an excursion of psychological discovery. It might even provide insight into ourselves as readers and interpreters of the story. While Pearl's approach to dream analysis is a powerful tool in understanding the unconsoled, it's not the only one. I intend to make more videos on this novel, so subscribe and enable notifications. And if you enjoyed using psychological concepts to better understand literature, these videos are the next ones you'll want to watch.